Welcome back to the Ross Bolin Podcast. I am your host, Ross Bolin, and my life is descending into sheer chaos. There's nothing all that abnormal happening, just stuff that happens to humans, but my job is really demanding right now. Busy season, if you will, for Game of Thrones podcasters. More on that later. I'm self-employed and self-loathing. My wife is pregnant, we have a toddler to raise already, so things are hectic, but it's all normal stuff, right? That frankly, I'm I'm blessed to complain about, but that won't stop me. I don't understand how you people are out there just calmly going about your lives, running errands, driving 90 miles per hour home, on the highway from the grocery store, picking up the kids from school, listening to podcasts, and picking your noses. I, I don't get it. I can't do I apparently can't do it. I can't do it. Maybe I'm still adapting back to normal life after the pandemic and getting divorced and suffering a mental breakdown, coming off meds, then getting remarried and now preparing to be a dad. But I'm barely holding it together. Day to day, I feel like, compared to a lot of you freaks that I see going about, like I'm in traffic crying, just screaming at the sky, why God, why is there only one lane open on this fucking street? And the people in the cars next to me are looking at me like I'm, like, you know, like I'm insane. By the way, the Model 3 is way too much like driving around in the Pope Mobile, man. Everyone can see everything you're doing in there. Nobody is getting roadhead in a Tesla Model 3 with factory tent. I'll just put it that way. So when I'm in my car, having a solo scream fight with God, people in the other cars, they've got like a front row seat to the show. It's not, it's not, it's not great. There's no privacy, no privacy. Privacy. I wish we said it that way. Privacy. That is a, a more enjoyable pronunciation of the word privacy. Privacy. Easy choice there, Americans. I don't know why we strayed on that particular word pronunciation, but I don't know. You know when you're, you're at the end of a workout and you want to quit because you're exhausted, but you reach down, deep down inside, and you find the strength and perseverance to push through and finish that fucking workout. That's all the time right now for me. Just every day, all the time, doing the next next task, it takes the same mentality that finishing a workout takes uh, right now. I'm permanently maxing out on the bench press of life, bro. That's what depression feels like, bro. What if I told you this entire episode so far was just a transcribed conversation between two friends at the gym that I read aloud to you? Anyway, I feel like we could all just use like a timeout, like the if sports, like sports to life analogy, timeout. You know, just one big like the president comes on TV and announces, folks, all right, listen up now. It's time we all took a rest, see? Like I do every afternoon at three. And we're going to take just a full two weeks off as a country from doing anything. We're taking a time out for two weeks. Serious question, why the fuck can't we do that? Like, I know we have allotted national holidays or whatever, but we shut the country down for two fucking years for COVID. Now, can we please get two weeks off to deal with all the stress of everything that has happened since? That would be sick. Time out. Excuse me while I take a sip of my liquid IV. Ah, that's great. This episode is brought to you by Liquid IV. The hot summer months are here. We need to be proactive about keeping our bodies fueled and hydrated. Making hydration a priority can help us feel healthier in our everyday lives. And one stick of Liquid IV in 16 ounces of water hydrates you 
two times faster and more efficiently than water alone. Plus, Liquid IV produces uh, their products taste great. Ten refreshing flavors like Concord Grape is one of my all-time favorites, as is Lemon Lime, Pina Colada, Tropical Punch. Sounds like summer, doesn't it? I drink Liquid IV after every workout I do here at Bolin Media Headquarters because it's crazy hot out there and I'm getting older and it's harder to stay hydrated. I drink them before a lot of my podcasts to stay hydrated so I don't have crazy cotton mouth up in the stew. Absolutely love Liquid IV. Liquid IV. So does everyone here at Bolin Media and my mom, for what it's worth. Debbie Bolin approved. Contains five essential vitamins, B3, B5, B6, B12, and vitamin C with three times the electrolytes of traditional sports drinks. Made with premium ingredients, non-GMO, free from gluten, dairy, and soy. And it uses the science of cellular transport technology, CTT. That's what makes Liquid IV so effective. It's designed to enhance rapid absorption of water and other key ingredients into the bloodstream. It's legit. And Liquid IV is also on a mission to change the world. They've donated over 20 million servings globally. Grab Liquid IV in bulk nationwide at Costco. Or you can get 25% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code ROSS at checkout. That's 25% off anything you order when you use promo code ROSS at Liquid IV. Dot com. Experience better hydration today at liquidiv.com, promo code ROSS. Anyway, I got to see my unborn baby's rib cage the other day. That was absolutely mind-blowing. Changed my whole perspective on shit. Look, the technology we have now for seeing a fetus in the womb almost feels unnecessary. Like, this doctor was in there counting my kid's ribs and checking out its femur and the different lobes in the baby's brain and showing them to me on a screen while the image is also being projected live onto another screen so my wife can see on a big screen is a live image of my living, breathing child in there while some doctor counts its brain lobes. Like, they, they told me my kid has long legs. It's 17 weeks into being grown inside my wife, and they're like, it's got long legs. It's the, this percentile, like 86 percentile for legs or some crazy shit. I was just like, what? How? Don't they all hit growth spurts at different hours of the day or whatever? Like, couldn't that be the only reason? I don't know. It just feels a little premature. It feels a little invasive, a little like, I don't think we were meant to know that yet, bruv. You've gone too far, science. It's like with the social media shit. We started out with some, like, update your status stuff, and then look how far it went. We went too far, and now people are dying. We have to push everything to the absolute furthest possible limits within capitalism, and I'm sure it's costing us out the ass to get to see my kid's facial bone structure months before he's born. But it was cool. Like, it, it, is, it was really, really cool. Like, I've felt some cool stuff. Everyone knows I've had sex now. But seeing this kid... <laughs> seeing this kid move around inside my wife, like, waving its arms around, like... And the doctor counting its toes and fingers and stuff on a screen... It was the coolest thing I've ever seen! I've... The coolest thing I've ever seen! Like, the heartbeat is cool. But this felt like really getting to see my kid. For the first time. And I don't even know how to describe the feeling. It's insane. Parents that are listening know, obviously, like, th this, this is why you have friends that they have kids and are a completely different person afterward. Because the it's not, like, the having of the baby, obviously, for women. I mean, just, just an otherworldly experience. It's like almost... You know, people are like, I took acid, man, and it changed me, and here's, because it's so crazy, you'll never even understand. That's how childbirth is, like, men, well, I can't understand, I can't fathom that. I'm watching it occur. Like, my, my wife is, there's a, there's a bump, a big, a big bump where the baby is now. I'm seeing it happen, but I can't understand. <laughs> like, you ever, you ever eaten a really big meal and as you're eating it just been like, this is gonna be tough. This is gonna be a rough shit. That's nine, ten months, like it's, <laughs> that's it, but times a, a thousand. A thousand, times a thousand. Every meal you eat is contributing to the largest shit you're ever gonna take, except it's gonna come out of your vagina. That's, what a fucking, what? A trip. Oh, holy shit. Even just saying it out loud, it's fucking crazy. 
it's crazy that we don't acknowledge how crazy that is on a daily basis as a society. There should be like a bell that rings or a fucking giant clock that goes off, dong, and we all stop and go, man, it's crazy as fuck that we were all born from a woman. Or most of us, you know, some of you might have been born in a lab or something. There might be some 11s in the audience for all I know. I don't fucking know. It's breaking my brain, as you can see. It's breaking my brain. It's, it's, it's completely insane. It irrevocably changes you, the process. There is you before you had kids, and then there's you after you have kids. The old you dies. Slowly. During the process of pregnancy. And a new you is born the day that your child is born. Like little moments, like the sonogram... They slowly break the old you down and dispose of it because you're not necessary anymore. And a new you has to be born to take care of this other human life. It is the deepest thing I've ever felt in my life. And I have felt some shit, friendo. Remember, had sex. It's just, I, I can't even, I can't, I'm going to attempt to over the course of these months with many more to go, I'm going to attempt to convey what this experience is like for me because I think it's, I think it's the, the coolest part of the human experience that I've found so far. And something that obviously every parent can relate to. Everyone who plans on having kids will be able to relate to in some way because it's, it's just, I mean, I've been through a lot of change. <laughs> I've been through a lot of transitions the past few years. A lot of big changes, life changes. That thing that changed me made me real different than I used to be. But nothing compares. It's not close. It's not close. I mean, you see this day to day growth of a baby child inside of this human that you hang out with and spend time with every day is the craziest shit that's ever happened to me. Like I said, deepest thing I've ever felt. Absolutely nuts. And the night my child was conceived, you know what I was wearing? Bird dogs. Today's episode is coincidentally also brought to you by bird dogs. Bird dogs have completely changed the game. Their shorts, pants, and joggers are made from the finest high-quality material and come with built-in liners that cradle your stovepipe for all-day comfort. Who likes being uncomfortable? Come on. It's hot as shit outside. If you're wearing shorts that don't breathe, that don't support your nads with a pair of built-in underwear that don't make you feel sexier than Pamela Anderson running down the beach in Baywatch, what the hell are you doing? It's time you upgrade to the shorts and pants of the future. Your balls will thank you. And because you listen to the Ross Boland Podcast, Bird Dogs is throwing in a free gift with your order. You go to birddogs.com, enter the promo code ROSS at checkout. That's birddogs.com, promo code ROSS, boom. Free Bird Dogs gift with your pair of Bird Dogs. It's been a dad cap. It's been a whistling football, a little handheld gaming device, all kinds of great gifts. Not sure what it is right now. Birddogs.com, code ROSS. Find out today. A little added extra surprise at the end of your purchase. You'll find out what your gift is that you're going to receive with your pair of bird dogs. You will not take these things off. I promise you they're incredibly comfortable. I wear them constantly to work out, to play basketball, to sleep often. They're phenomenal. The built-in underwear is absolutely essential. I love it. Birddogs.com, code ROSS when you check out for that free gift with your order. I've got some insane headlines of the day. Are you mentally prepared? I'm going to give you a second. They're insane. The headlines in this segment, they're, they're usually insane. The first one is feel good, though. It's feel good. I brought you some positivity today to balance out all of the, the silliness in the world. You're going to love it. It is the year of the dog, but this is a feline-related headline. Feline headline, if you will. Hashtag feline headline. Copyright trademark. We're going to make shirts. Beloved family cat reunited with owners after going missing 11 years ago. You see how I put emphasis on years there? Because that's a wildly unbelievable amount of time to have, for, to have a pet be missing and then found, right? So from Metro, a much-loved family cat missing for 11 years, has been reunited with his owner after being spotted on a Facebook page. So it turns out 
Meta does do something positive for the world. Marauding Moggy Ziggy, I don't know what that means, this is British talk, went missing in 2011. <laughs> <laughs> as a as a one, 2011 as a one year old kitten, leaving owner Ruth Orne devastated. She was devastated. I, I can imagine losing a pet. Terrible, terrible thing. Nobody wants to go through that. After initial searches proved unessential, or unsuc- <laughs> they were essential. They were unsuccessful, though. Ruth said they had long given up hope of seeing him alive again. But after pictures of him were posted on Facebook, a vet carried out a microchip check, and he was brought back home. Wait, I'm sorry. The cat had a fucking microchip in for 11 years, and you didn't check until you saw a photo of it on Facebook? What, because it was going to cost $59.99 to run the fucking check or something? Your cat? You got a pet. You got a responsibility. You get your ass out there, and you find that fucking cat. 11 years, and you didn't run the microchip? 11 years? That is unbelievable. Facebook. What the fuck? All right, so Ruth of Royston Hertz, uh, again, <clears throat> ignorant American, don't know. She said, on Sunday, my ex had a phone call from a microchip database saying someone had found our cat. Hold up. So she never even checked. She never even checked. She ne- not in 11 years. She never, you didn't even earn that cat. She doesn't even deserve that cat. Someone go take the cat back. 11 years, and she, the, her ex, her ex called her up and said, oh shit, the microchip company just called me and said they found your cat. Remember when we broke up in 2009? I can't do math. <laughs> but 2011? 11 years? <laughs> she said, we went out one day as usual back in 2011 and, and never came back. Oh, the cat did. Not them. They'd had him just under a year. He was fully grown. They posted flyers throughout town, went out the night after, shaking food, and following sightings, but had no luck. Shaking food? Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. I guess a little bit of that action. It says, time went on, and the chances of Ziggy returning began to dwindle, but despite the length of his absence, it turned out he hadn't strayed far from home. Why didn't you run the microchip check? This is the shortest documentary ever made, true crime documentary. Why didn't you run the microchip check for 11 years? Oh, because I'm an asshole. I didn't want the cat back. Oh, okay. End of documentary. What? It says, quote, Apparently some lads had found him on Royston Industrial Estate, around a 20-minute walk from where he went missing, explains Ruth. Uh, so he was right there the whole time. You never noticed him, never spotted him. Then you saw him on your ex. I'm sorry, your ex. Who saw him on Facebook? What did the Facebook post have to do with anything? Your ex is calling her up and telling her that he he got a call from the microchip company. What happened here? This is not good enough journalism. This is not good enough. It's not Texas state approved. Tell you that much. I got questions and I need answers. I got kitty cat questions. <laughs> it says after more than a decade away, it was more it was anyone's guess whether Ziggy would be the same cat the family had known. What, like it had been in the fucking clink? Like prison change the cat? It's gonna come out hard as fuck. Wielding a switchblade with its posable thumb. They don't have posable thumbs, that's the thing. Mr. Jinx lacked the posable thumb to flush the toilet. You remember. Meet the parents. I hate that I have to explain my references, but not everybody's seen every movie. I have. But not everybody has. Believe it or not. Fucking cat. What? If if Bruce or Bella goes missing for 20 minutes, I'm calling the microchip company. They got chips. Better believe it. I put them in their ass myself. I'm just kidding. And they don't go in their ass. They're implanted in like their shoulder. It's kind of, again, every time microchips come up, I'm shocked that we don't have chips as human beings already. That we're not chipped up. I thought 2022, we'd be chipped up by now. Everybody thought the moment was going to be when we got vaccinated for COVID. I don't think it was. We'd know by now. Somebody's dug that shit out, for sure. Some psycho Redditor has already taken a knife to the spot where they got the vaccine to try to find the fucking microchip. Failed miserably, bled out on the floor, and never got reported on. But... 
it is shocking that we haven't gotten chipped up as a society at this point. There's that Black Mirror episode where they chip up their kids. And, like, my wife always says that they, if they had the chip, that we were doing it to our kids immediately. And I'm like, they're fucking psycho. But, <laughs> but I don't know. Now that she's pregnant, I'm thinking about it. And it's like, yeah, I don't know. Well... If there was an, if, you know, if there was an app, a non-invasive app, a, a, if there was the least, I guess it's invasive no matter what, the least invasive possible version of an app, I just want to be able to open the app and see where the kid is. That's all. Like, my, if I can do that with my fucking iPhone, shouldn't I be able to do that with my goddamn baby child? Shouldn't I be able to? Don't judge me. What a monster. Fuck you. <laughs> Don't you judge me. Don't you judge me. I'm judging me a little bit, but I also sort of do want to do that. So whenever somebody's ready to try to get that passed by, it's probably illegal, I imagine, right? Otherwise, a bunch of psychopaths would be doing it already because I'm not that crazy. There's people way crazier than me. I know that for a fact, Jack. There are levels to this shit. I'm still a functioning member of society. I got a mortgage. <laughs> Some of y'all are crazy as hell. I'm crazier than me. All right, so let's say uh, they're worried about the cat. They're worried he's going to be changed from his time away. However, Ruth says he hasn't changed much at all, and we're obviously in shock. Super grateful he's back home. He looks the same. His her accent's changing, uh, and his temperament hasn't changed. He he still loves a cuddle and a good pat on the bum. I added that last part in. Ruth spanks her cats, what I'm implying. Allegedly. Back to Ruth. We can't tell if he recognizes us because he was always such a friendly cat, but he's been sitting on our laps and purring happily. Brr. Brr. I can't do a good cat purr. I can do a gr great meow, shit purr. Meow. Meow. Remember, I grew up with cats before dogs, but a shit purr. Brr. Oh, that's not... <laughs> I don't know that might if this is like there's either two ways that just went it was either ASMR and kind of funny like ha ah, that also felt good while it, sound, while it was funny to my brain or it was awful and you really want me to move on so should we try one more <laughs> one more purr nah nah we're good we're good although little is known about Iggy's time Ziggy Iggy Pop's time away, he was in good health when he was rescued, leading Ruth to believe he was living as a stray but being fed by several local households. So not only did you never check the microchip, not, every, not only that, not only did you never see the cat wandering about, the odds of you seeing it wandering about were quite high because it was being taken care of by several local households because it took several local households to pick up the slack that you left behind, Ruth, when you didn't run the microchip check, when you didn't go to www.catfinder.com, and it's, this is not a sponsor, I'm joking, That's I don't even know if that's a real website, that could be some weird shit. Don't go to that website. But I'm just saying, Ruth, you failed as a pet owner. This whole segment was built to shame one British woman. And I don't even know if she's British because I don't know the principalities or little states or whatever version of states they've got over there. I'm ignorant. I'm not going to look it up either because it's not just that I don't know. It's that I don't care. <laughs> I'll look up Canada and Mexico stuff. That's it. We're attached. I can only take in so much information, man. All right? Everything in there is clogged up. I'm trying to absorb kid facts and shit now. Barely got any brain space left. Other stuff that was essential is getting kicked out. I've noticed this. This is what happens, I think. You get old as fuck, and you've got too much knowledge, and your brain just starts deleting old files to make way for the new shit. Like when your Gmail gets too full, and that's what's happening to me now. I'm just forgetting basic shit. Because I'm trying to pack in baby facts and podcasts. How to raise a human and also podcasts. Fuck. Sometimes, this is the thing that makes me lean towards like, maybe, maybe, 
Maybe we should have just like a socialist society. Because when you try to put those two things on a scale, what's more important, like your job or like raising, being a good father, it's not fucking close. It's not, clo- it's not supposed to be close. It feels a lot closer than it's supposed to. It's not supposed to be close. That's supposed to be an overriding, obvious, primary responsibility. But in our society in America, it's like, yeah, oh shit, yeah, so I'll find some time to be a dad too. I can, I'll carve that out. I'll see what, see if I can clear some time in the schedule to make way for this other human life that knows nothing about the world at all except what I tell it. That's, I'll, I'll think on making some time for that. So I, that's the only time that my brain's like, maybe we should just have like whatever. The, I don't know if that's socialism or capitalism or uh, I know it's not capitalism or communism. I'm not sure which. I don't fucking know. I don't care. Poli sci major or Twitter freak that's political Twitter freak right now that's listening. I don't care. Don't explain it to me. I don't want to know. I don't care. I don't want to know. I don't care. I'm just saying. I don't actually want the information. I just want to say my opinion. That's what we do now. I don't want feedback. I just want to be able to say my opinion into the microphone and walk away and never think about it again. (laughs) That'd be the ideal version of my job. Okay? If I could say things that meant some things that were very important and then just never think about them again and carry no responsibility for their weight. I don't think that would be fair either. There's a happy medium in there between where we're at with cancel culture in 2022 and like you can just say anything with no consequences because there can't be either of these things. Those are both fucking crazy. Right? Can I get a hey yeah in your car alone right now in traffic? Hey yeah if you agree with me. Fucking hit that shit one time. (laughs) I told you I'm clinging. To the edge of sanity. There's a song that talks about this. I, I can't. I feel like uh, I just want to give shouts to Seal, one of my favorite all time singers. He has a song called Crazy, and it's like, If we're ever gonna survive, unless we get a little crazy. And that, I identify with that song a lot lately. <laughs> I often find myself thinking about the things that Seal and I have in common. You know, beside the obvious things we don't have in common, which all of you are thinking about right now. Stop it. Stereotypers, man. Oh, holy God, this story's not even over. Okay. It says, although little is known about Ziggy's time away, he was in good health when he was rescued. Oh, we already got that. So... Just to recap, cat's been gone 11 years. Several local households have to take care of the cat because Ruth is a shit pet owner. Then, Ruth got a new cat. She fucking replaced it. So it's not that she didn't want a cat. She got a new cat named Freddy and said she never forgot about Ziggy. The pair have met but apparently don't seem too focused about each other, which is a good thing, Ruth says. The cat, Freddy, and, and, and it's the, Freddy and the cat it replaced, Ziggy. It says, after a couple of years, I had given up hope. It was a miracle, and it's like he's never been away. It's not like a miracle at all, or, and I don't, it sounds like maybe you just didn't want to call your ex. That's what it sounds like. That's not a miracle. People, people throw this word miracle around too lightly, dude. I read the Bible. Jesus pulls off crazy shit, all right? Shit that David Blaine can't do, all right? That's a miracle. This is fucking... You were lazy. <laughs> how are those two things? How was it's? It was not a miracle. She said she didn't say it was like a miracle. She said, "quote It was a miracle." No, the fuck it wasn't. God did not intervene on behalf of Ziggy. Ziggy had a better life before, frankly, being tended to by several local families. Your ass replaced Ziggy with Freddy the second it went missing. Didn't even bother to go to the website for the microchipping company and cough up the forty nine ninety five to get Ziggy back, and probably went over to the fucking, you know, British pound and grabbed another cat for free. For all I know, I don't know what you're doing over there, Ruth, but I'm not letting you get away with it. Not on this podcast, Ruth. 
Today's episode is also brought to you by MyBookie. Winning season has officially returned, and with NFL preseason live, there are so many opportunities to win at MyBookie, whether you're a seasoned better or you're a first-timer. MyBookie gets you the most for your money with a double deposit bonus up to 1000 bucks when you use the code RBP at sign up with your first deposit. College football. Starting up this weekend, the NFL preseason is rocking, MLB regular season heating up, NBA is around the corner. We are entering my favorite sports betting time of the year. I love watching my Houston sports teams play, but I love watching them play even more when I have a little loot on the line, and my bookie is the place to play, friends. It's simple. Let's say you're looking to bet the start of college football this weekend or MLB uh, regular season or MMA or whatever sport you fancy. You go to my bookie. Let's say you deposit $250 to play with code RBP. Well, then you're going to get that amount doubled to $500 and will then have twice as much to bet on your trash NFL team or whatever college football team you choose or whatever you want to bet on. That's the beauty of my bookie. They've got all the different sports that you could possibly imagine, plus a live casino. Code RBP at my bookie to claim your deposit bonus, and you can use your funds to bet on as many individual games, contests, or props as you want. They've got team totals. You can predict the Super Bowl winner or use the my bookie prop, bowl, uh, prop builder to give yourself the edge you need to secure the bag. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere with my bookie code. RBP. All right, I've got another headline. Mentally prepare yourself for this one. This one, it's a lot. This one's a lot to take in. It's not so feel good. I, it's funny to me, but only in a really, really weird way. You ready? A-list celebrities who use a fucking shitload of water being roasted online. I wrote that headline. It was mine. Here's the headline from the LA Times. Kim, Kim Kardashian, Kevin Hart, and Sylvester Stallone accused of drought restriction violations. See why mine is more fun? But the story itself is absolutely hilarious for the worst possible reasons. So it says, uh, I'll read a little from the LA Times here. They're among the biggest names in entertainment and sports. Sylvester Stallone, Dwayne Wade, Kevin Hart, Kim and Kourtney Kardashian. And as Southern California struggles with a third year of punishing drought and unprecedented water restrictions, they may be among the biggest names in water waste in the tiny, or in the, in the something San Fernando Valley enclaves of Calabasas and Hidden Hills, documents obtained by the Times show. The celebrities were among the two thousand, oh, more than 2,000 customers who recently were issued notices of exceedance by the Las Virginis Municipal Water District, indicating that they had surpassed 150% of their monthly water budgets at least four times since the agency declared a drought emergency at the end of last year. Their properties are now subject to the installation of flow restrictor devices, which can reduce showers to a trickle and silence lawn sprinklers. Pause. All right, hold up. So some of these people were doing 150% of their monthly water budget four months in a row. And now they've gotten issued notices of exceedance. Apparently, this is a, if it gets so bad, they can actually install devices that flow or restrict the flow of your water. Shut off lawn sprinklers. Let's get into some of the stories here. Among the addresses that receive notices, an $18 million Hidden Hills property listed under the name of former NBA star Dwayne Wade. And D. Wade has been acting a fool with his water usage. (laughs) Greta Thunberg is going to be up his ass because listen to this. Dwayne Wade exceeded his allocated water budget in June. Dwayne Wade and the Wade household exceeded their allocated water budget in June by more than 1,400% or 90,000 gallons. Of water. That was an improvement over May when the property exceeded its budget by 489,000 gallons more than any other customer. That's not the list you want to be on. Wade and his wife, actor Gabrielle Union, attributed the excess use at their property to a problem with their pool. In a statement, the couple said they have, quote, taken drastic steps to reduce water usage in accordance with the new city guidelines and have since uh, moved into a different home, apparently. 
Holy shit. Though. That, how big was that pool? 489,000 gallons in May? What, were they wa- running a fucking water theme park back there? Couldn't you power a splash town with that? Also notified for excessive use was an $18 million, 2.26 acre Hidden Hills property owned by Sylvester Stallone and his wife, model Jennifer Flavin. The property in June used about 533% more uh, than its allocated budget, 230,000 excess gallons, nothing to shake your dick at. That was an increase from 195,000 excess gallons in May. Okay, holy God. That's a lot combined. In a statement provided to the Times, Stallone's attorney, Marty Singer, said the numbers could, quote, mischaracterize and misrepresent the situation regarding the water usage at my client's property, end quote. Uh, He went on to say they have more than 500 mature trees on the property, including innumerable fruit trees as well as pine trees. Absent adequate watering, in all likelihood, they would die. That could result in dead or damaged trees falling on my client's property and neighboring properties, end quote. Innumerable, which implies that they, in fact, cannot be counted, which isn't, which is just, you know, what? What? You, you could count. They're not innumerable. There might be a fuckload of them, but also, like, I don't know, man. Then reg- I don't know, man. That's not, that, you, what? Just use the allotted amount. Innumerable fruit trees, as well as pine trees. It's just, look, I, I try to be good about my water usage, you know? I get it. The droughts are, the, it's getting rough out. The global warming, I get it, all right? I, be, I believe science is, is generally correct, you know? I believe that. <laughs> and it's hard, man. Like, sometimes I'll take a shower after a long day and I'll be relaxing in there for, like, you know, I'm talking five minutes. And I, I'll feel bad. I'll, I'm like, oh, fuck. I'm, I don't know. This is kind of a waste of water. You know? Because it, it, I think it is. But then I've also been told, like, that's our most easily recyclable water. That it's, like, but I don't, I don't know how much I buy all that. I don't know, man. I don't know how much I trust plumbing and pipes. I don't know what's going on out there. And I don't know what I don't know. You know? But I try. I try to brush my teeth real... I Turn the water on to get it wet, turn it back off. Don't let it run the whole time. Don't be an asshole. Just generally, I try not to be an asshole. Right? And that's, that's one thing I know that these people aren't doing. They're not trying to not be an asshole. Because that's too much. And we're on this, with this kick right now as a society where we're, we're roasting all the A-list celebrities for their private jet use and their... Uh, like Taylor Swift has been catching a lot of flack. Basically, they're, they're, they're crimes against Mother Nature, as they're being described by the uh, far left. And that doesn't feel entirely fair. I Look, all I'm saying is don't throw stones if you live in a glass house. And a lot of you motherfuckers are living in glass houses. I am included in this statement. I don't, I don't think we're in a position to, I don't know. I'm just, I don't think we're in a position to roast any of these people for their, now some of them, look, obviously if the Dwayne Wades and the Sylvester Stallones and the Taylor Swifts of the world, the extremists, the extreme examples, whatever, roast away, who gives a shit? They'll, they're, it's not like any of them are going to be personally affected by the roasting. It's just like, it's just like, stop doing, don't be an asshole, like we said. But it just, there's like a line somewhere for this stuff. I don't know where it is. I just know you shouldn't throw stones if you live in a glass house. And that's, it's like, I forget, I feel like our society forgot that rule. Just try to chill. You know? Take care of you. Worry about you. If everybody did more of that, this is not like a, you know, inventive, crazy, clever statement. If everybody did more of that, worried about themselves, we'd probably all be in a better spot. Just not me, because this is my job. I got to talk about something besides me. I do enough talking about me. 500 mature trees. Innumerable fruit trees. Can't count them. 
That's how many there are. Today's Upper RBP is also brought to you by Indochino. Whether you're going to be a groom in a wedding party or a lucky guest, everyone wants to look their best for a wedding. With a custom-fitted suit from Indochino, you'll look great, feel confident, and enjoy the big day without fussing over your clothes. Choose every detail on the suit, shirt, dinner jacket, and more at affordable prices that may surprise you for fully custom pieces. I can tell you personally... The Indochino experience is incredible, whether you go to one of their showrooms and get measured up or you do it from home online. I have done both now. I went to the Indochino in Austin for my first time through, but for my most recent order, I measured myself at home, checked out all their wares strictly online. The end result is still the best custom clothing experience I've ever had. Many of you complimented me on my green Indochino suit when I posted photos on my social media. I will be wearing that again at a wedding this weekend because it's incredible and I look great in it. And that's what Indochino can do for you. Uh, that one was ordered offline, by the way. Didn't even go into the store. Every suit is made to your exact measurements. You can customize every detail. Create a suit that fits you and your style perfectly with options for fabrics, lapel shape, custom monograms, statement linings, and more. And the best part, Indochino suits start from just $429 and shirts from $79. Indochino also offers completely custom-fitted shirts, casual wear, and more. Get a wardrobe personalized to your style and taste without spending a fortune. They're always adding new pieces and options so you can stay on trend and in style. Explore their relaxed yet refined approach to spring suits with their new spring pastels. If you got a big day coming up, getting the perfect look is no, uh, no big deal with Indochino. Get $50 off any purchase of $399 or more by using promo code RBP at Indochino.com to support the podcast and get a little discount there. That's a $50 off your purchase of $399 or more at Indochino.com. Indochino.com, promo code RBP. It has been absolute chaos here. Uh, (laughs) As I was saying at the top of the show... For the last couple weeks, I mean, really for like a month, I really for a few years, but I knew this was coming. Like, look, if you're, if you're in the dark here, I had a Game of Thrones podcast back in the day called Oysters, Clams, and Cockles, and it did really, really well. It got really, really big to the, to the fact that we are the number one rated Game of Thrones podcast in the whole world, in the world, the number one, (laughs) not a joke. And uh, we were number one on the charts, on the Apple charts, and on the on the podcast charts, and it was crazy. We did millions of downloads, absolutely nuts. More people know me from Oysters, Clams, and Cockles, otherwise known as OCC, than anything else I've done in my career. So with this first Game of Thrones spinoff coming down the pipeline, we knew it was going to be a big deal. We just didn't really know what to expect in terms of how big of a deal. But HBO has absolutely knocked that shit out of the park, as you have probably seen on social media, um, not just from me, but also from everywhere. Um, the first episode was really, really good, and it looks like we're uh, in a really good spot to enjoy a great season of television here. Hopefully we will. Um, as a result, our Game of Thrones podcast is now a House of the Dragon podcast, and it's been a busy week for everybody at Bolin Media because of this. <laughs> Whether it's uh, Content Cade chopping up a, a million different clips for me to dump out. I'm pushing them out all over every different social media platform. Jared's been doing Formula Bone F1 show, as well as helping edit and produce uh, OCC and whatnot with me. So it's it's been it's just been crazy. There's been so much going on. I was obvi- I'm very I'll say this extremely happy with how good the House of the Dragon premiere was. Like obviously, it's a weird situation to be in as a fan. Because I'm a fan of Game of Thrones and House of the Dragon, right? And, and, the, and A Song of Ice and Fire and the whole universe that George R. R. Martin has created. I'm a fan of it. I read all the books, right? All the, I should say this, I read the, the uh, A Song of Ice and Fire books. I have not read Fire and Blood, all right? And as a fan, I'm stoked. But then there's this other side of me that's literally professionally invested and monetarily invested in the success of some of this, these TV shows, like with Westworld, I was really excited that season four went well because like we had to watch it. Like we were going to have to watch it one way or the other. And season three was such a stinker. Like if they had come out and really dropped the ball here with house of the dragon, it would have been a massive, massive bummer because that's such a big potential opportunity for our company. We're a very small business. We only have a handful of brands and they're operated by just three full-time employees and a, and, and a couple contract employees that are part-time. So it's like, it's just, 
enormous for us to get the kind of exposure we've gotten out of oysters, clams, and cockles, and that we continue to get out of uh, Formula Bone on YouTube and on TikTok as well. I mean, those are big numbers that these shows are putting up, and that puts our company in a much better position to get more fans and more downloads and more listens and more views, and that, in turn, leads to more revenue, and then we can hire more employees and continue to grow this thing as we go. Um, so I'm obviously, there's it's, it's a lot of pressure. Going into the first episode of House of the Dragon, I was incredibly nervous, like to the level that I am very nervous when I go into a really, really important interview for this podcast. Like when we've interviewed like big time people that have actually kind of like, you know, thrown me into that like starstruck zone. So I was shook. And after the credits started rolling, I was just smiling like, oh man, they did it. They really did it. They put us back there in that good place because everybody knows season eight of Game of Thrones sucked. But you let go. Move on. It happens. There's shitty movies in the MCU. The Sopranos had weird episodes. Breaking Bad had weird episodes. Every every good show has weird seasons or episodes. One of the episodes, uh, seasons of The Wire was kind of lame. It is what it is, man. You don't let that ruin and sully the whole series. Certainly don't let it ruin and sully the next series. And the people in charge of this show, Miguel Sapochnik and Ryan Condal, are both proven. All right? Go look at Miguel's track list. What episodes of Game of Thrones he made. Just if you're on the fence, this is why you should go watch House of the Dragon. And really, if you want to be real about it, I think you're in an even better spot if you never watched Game of Thrones. <laughs> because there are spoilers in it for House of the Dragon. And House of the Dragon is, you could watch this first and then watch Game of Thrones. So if you never watched it, even more reason to jump in. Because you can end up supporting Bowl and Media in an even bigger way by listening to Oysters, Clams, and Cockles. And if you don't want to watch House of the Dragon, if you don't give a shit about HBO, if you don't care about Game of Thrones, I get it. Fine. Fine. But at least go rate and review the podcast on Apple Podcasts. Do us a solid. We're like the 150 biggest podcast in the world right now. That would be sick if you could help us get even higher. That's a big part of their algorithm there is new reviews and listens and downloads and new subscribers and blah, 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 blah. So, yeah. Oysters, Clams, and Cockles. On Apple Podcasts, Spotify, you can also subscribe on YouTube and watch every episode, but we will be dropping a companion podcast available for everyone to listen to and watch for each episode of House of the Dragon all season long. And the next nine weeks will be busy as heck as a result here at Bolin Media. Remember, we small. Start up, baby. Grind life. And as such, we could use your support. You can support us by listening to OCC, listening to the Formula Bone F1 show. Another race recap out now, race preview coming. Um, and that's the case every week, all F1 season long, when there are races to recap and when there are races to preview on Formula Bone F1 show hosted by your own Jared Borslow, our co-host here on the Ross Boland podcast. Jay bone will be back with us soon, I promise. Just a busy, busy, busy week here. And also rate and review RBP while you're at it. The Ross Bolin Podcast. If you've never rated and reviewed us, we appreciate that. It means a lot. Thank you. Goes a long way to helping us out. Follow us on social media, at the Ross Bolin Podcast on TikTok, at the Ross Bolin Podcast on Instagram, at Ross Bolin Pod on Twitter. Obviously, I am Ross Bolin. If you haven't figured that out at this point, then, man, it's crazy that you listened this long. At WR Bolin is my handle on Twitter and Instagram. Follow Jared at Jared Borslow and Formula Bone F1 Show at Formula Bone F-O-R-M-U-L-A-B-O-N-E on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter as well. Uh, yeah, Jared will be back. We're just in the middle of trying to make five shows work at the same time. That, that's that been August for us here. Between Westworld and House of the Dragon starting and F1 returning from the short break and Houston Sports Chaos and RBP, it's just been, it's been a lot going on. So... Um, we have not cloned each other despite the beliefs of the masses. There are only three of us. So if you can support us by going to patreon.com slash Ross Boland podcast where you pick up an ad-free additional exclusive episode every week from the Ross Boland podcast. Uh, all new material with no ads in it. You can pick the $5 tier and you'll get the audio. If you want to watch the full video, you pick the $10 tier. All right. And, uh, yeah, bowlandmedia.com slash shop for merch. Also, the Patreon episode for this week is actually dropping next Monday on patreon.com slash Ross Podcast. A little bit late, but I'm getting in uh, 
before the month ends, rest assured. It's just this, again, a chaos. Appreciate your patience, by the way. Love y'all. Thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. Good fun today. Holler at me on social media. Hey, remember, like I always say, the more of our videos you can comment on, share, like, means a lot to us. Also, if you're still waiting on a package from me, I've got some going out next week. All right, I've not forgotten about you. I've got a list of names of stuff of, uh, to get to people, so stick with me. Promise you, I will get that stuff to you. Until our next episode, until you hear or see my voice again, you hear my voice, you would see my face. Until next time, peace be with you. And also with you.